So I'm going to show you today about synthesizers. Now we have uh, old synthesizers that are actually standalone bits of hardware, things like the Roland Juno or the Yamaha DX7, the Hammond organ, for example. But now everything's sort of moved over to uh, software synths. And I'm demonstrating the workings, the main workings of a synth today using the ES1, which is a Logic plugin first devised in 2004 uh, and still part of the package when you buy Pro X. So I'm going to show you the main features of the synths. Um, things that you will find on any plugin. So rather than being plugin specific, this is more a broad overview. So we have the main uh, controls, cutoff and resonance. And what are they? Well, this is called subtractive synthesis, where you start off with, let's say, a block of wood, and then you carve bits out of it to reveal your finished product. That's really what we've got here. Everything that you do here is actually taking away something, hence the term subtractive. So if I just, for example, uh, play with the cutoff frequency first, this determines how strong the harmonic content of your note is. Then we have resonance. And what that does is at the point at which you cut the treble or the, the harmonic content, the resonance just adds a little bit of bite at that point. can be quite a powerful sound that will cut through a mix very nicely. Then we have things like the glide control and what that does is it uh, takes time to go between two notes. Now usually this is uh, more useful if you're in mono mode. That's fairly unusable, really. But if you set your uh, glide control to be a little bit more uh, gentle, it can be an extra form of expression. So I'm going to take the glide control away. I've got also another control here that sets the number of voices that I can have, and that means the number of notes at once you can have. To get the best effect out of the glide control, ideally you won't want only one voice at a time so that you end up with this. So you can't play chords. And then I'll put my chords back there. So I'm going to take my uh, resonance down a bit and the cutoff down a bit. <laughs> now we have another bank of controls in subtractive synthesis, which controls the envelope of a sound. And that means what happens to the sound in volume terms or with the resonance and cutoff controls. So I've got this on the output of here, which is essentially it's an amplifier. So if I take the attack control, now you can see this on the graphical uh, display here, you can see attack on the bottom right hand side of the screen is going up and down at the moment. There we go. And I've programmed that to be this control on my software, on my uh, synthesizer controller very sharp attack at the moment. If I bring the attack up a bit, it's taken that attack off. Now the next control, well if I keep going with the attack control, I can have an infinitely long attack. When I say infinitely long, it's obviously not in totally infinite. you can 
play with your other controls at the same time. Everything can be done real time. So I'm just going to take the attack control down a little bit uh, towards the towards full attack. There we go. So next up is the decay control. Now, after the following, after the initial attack of the note, you can hear that the the note falls away. And if I take a, a quicker decay, you can make really short sounds, regardless of how long I hold the keys down. So at its longest setting, you have a sustained sound. Now, that's where the sustain control comes in. If I turn my attack control, maybe I'll just turn it down so it's quite a, a short sound. There we go. If I bring the sustain control up, the initial attack falls away, but it leaves behind in its wake a quieter sound, which is your sustain control. So the decay and sustain are quite similar in effect. If you have the decay all the way up uh, to a long decay, essentially it sustains. But the sustain control is brought in whenever you have fast decay. And the last control of the uh, the an envelope as it's known is called release and that's what happens when you take your hand off the key you can set the release time to be let's set it halfway up and the sound just falls away so it's quite a nice sort of almost like a reverberation at the end So it can be useful if you don't have a sustain pedal, for example, on your keyboard. And there we go. There are the main features of that synth. So we've got cutoff and resonance, and then we've got the envelope. Now, those are the main controls. There are other subtle controls which are more synthesizer specific, such as this one, which enables me to mix an initial sound, which I've got. If you look at the top left of the screen, you can see that there are two round controls and the top one is pointing to something called sawtooth. It's like um, um, a diagonal line with a vertical line attached to it. Now, that's the type of oscillator that we have. Oscillators are the essentially the first stage of a synthesizer. Now I can mix the output of this. Well, I could rather I can take the, uh, the second oscillator, which is the round control underneath it and mix the two. And it's known as the sub. So that you get an, oscilla an oscillator that's an octave below. So the oscillator at the bottom is set to square wave at the moment. And the cutoff and resonance control operate on whichever oscillator you've got working or a combination of the two things. We have a modulation control, which is usually the pair of wheels that you find on an old synth. At the moment, I've got it set to vibrato. Vibrato and tremolo are different things. Vibrato is where you vary the pitch of the note 
around the central tone. So it's kind of going... It's putting a note either side and just going between those. Now you can, on some synths, including this one, you can set the modulation to do something different. For example, if I set it to the cutoff control, I have a bit more expressive control. I could set it to the resonance control as well. That sounds pretty angry. So I'm just going to go back to pitch. And then we have pitch bend as well, which is by default a tone either side of your main note. And there we go. There's many different sounds you can get just from those controls, just from your cutoff and resonance and your envelope control. Never be tempted to just stick with a preset that you're given on a synth, because although they've obviously been programmed by experts to simulate different things, they are uh, sounds that are then available to all and sundry. And if you change just one thing, one of these um, aspects, you have a completely new sound, which is unique and means that it's not the same as everyone else on planet Earth that has this same synth. you name it you can do it so that means you can have a um, a play with the synth in order that you can try and simulate different instruments so for example if we want something like strings the attack is generally quite long you don't have a unless you grab the bow and go eh, on a string usually in string sounds you want them to be kind of pads really so a soft attack and a soft release and a reasonably um, long decay and sustain I know it doesn't sound hugely like strings at the moment, but a little bit more tweaking and you can get a quite a passable string sound. If I was to take the uh, cutoff down even further and introduce a bit of resonance with a faster decay, you could simulate the, the a French horn maybe. Well, there you go. You can get um, a lot of other sounds and you can get some pretty weird sounds if you use your modulation with different aspects of your synth. And there we go, there's the synthesizer.